Today's morning coffee vinyl side. Eddie Burt, Light Cool, the contemporary trombone of Eddie Burt, 1955-58. This Somerset reissue of Eddie Burt's 1955 album, Let's Dig Burt, Eddie that is, is really good. I got worried when I pulled it out of the sleeve and saw the Somerset label. Not only were they a bit of a scammy label, but as a budget operation they were not known for their quality control. My disc had rough edges from the post-pressing trim of excess material, and the grooves looked pretty shallow, enough so that I was worried about the needle skating. But it played well enough after a clean, so I was happy. Born in Yonkers, New York in 1922, Bert got his first trombone from his father at the age of 13 and developed an immediate obsession. Practicing six to eight hours a day, most of his non-school waking hours, it is said he would sneak off to the big city at the age of 16 to watch the Basie Band and while there, petition the trombonists for lessons at the stage door. It actually worked, and Eddie received instruction from both Benny Morton and J.C. Higginbotham for his efforts. Securing his first paid gig in 1940, Burt's career was long and distinguished, and lasted until his death in 2012 at the age of 90. Eddie Burt played with all the greats, Stan Kenton and Benny Goodman, Coleman Hawkins, Charles Mingus and Thelonious Monk, and he also accompanied singers like Lena Horne and Bobby Short. He was there at the birth of Cool with Miles' band, and played with Charlie Parker in the infamous 27-piece Band That Never Was, put together by arranger Gene Rowland. And he even played with experimental composer Edgar Varese. Pulled out of Woody Sherman's band and drafted into the U.S. Army in 1944, into Bill Finnegan's U.S. Army Band, Eddie was able to pursue a music degree, then a master's degree at the Manhattan School of Music on his discharge, complements of the GI Bill, which led to him getting teaching credentials in the mid-50s for music education. He taught as a university professor in parallel to his playing career for the rest of his life. Loved for his creativity and stand-up work ethic, Eddie was a virtual rock of dependability, seemingly devoid of the vices that took out many of his close friends and peers. You can hear that confidence here. There's something wonderfully pensive and contemplative about the performances on this album, and they remind me of why I love cool jazz so much. I love the disposition of cool, the calculus, the word itself and everything it embodies. And I love coffee, too. What a way to greet the day. We need to play more jazz on Morning Coffee Vinyl Side for sure.